Praise the Lord, Periscope. It's Apostle John Arcovio. I'll give each one of you a few minutes to get on here. Praise the Lord. I'm trying out my new little studio I set up in my back room. My daughter went to my daughter went to uh, um, moved to Santa Rosa, and so we've turned her um, her room here into a studio. So give me a second while I get this adjusted. It's trial and error for me. God bless you. Those of you coming on, while you're coming on. Well, I'm getting ready to do this periscope. If you could uh, swipe your phone to the left or right. Yes, I was at crossover. Thank you for asking. Um, wonderful time. Wonderful ministry. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, give you folks a chance to get on. God bless you. And uh, i got a couple words today I want to share with you. Thank you for joining with us. It's Apostle John Arcovio from... Sacramento, California. I say Sacramento. I actually live about seven miles south of Elk Grove. And um, praise God. Someone called and left a message. Prophet Edwards. Okay. Uh, Prophet Edwards, I will check and see your message. I apologize. I've been under the weather since I flew back from uh, North Carolina. Picked a little bug up. And so I've been kind of laid up for two days. I'm just now... Uh, coming out. God bless you from Raleigh, North Carolina. All these exciting new networks and, and connections God's bringing. I'm so excited. Amen. God bless you. Again, Apostle John Arcobio with an international network of apostles and prophets. Thank you, Prophet Edwards, Edwards for uh, praying for me. Praise God. And uh, God really stirred my soul this morning. Uh, early this morning, I was up praying and then uh, uh, one of the... Uh, Periscopes I follow, Apostle John Edcart from Chicago popped up, and amen. God bless you, uh, Jonathan and Ashley. Oh, Jonathan and Ashley, bless you. Yes, I got to catch up with you folks. I apologize. I haven't forgotten you. Amen. I'm, I'm going to be home this next week. I don't leave again until next week, so uh, I'm going to be doing some... I'm finishing a book I'm working on called The Blueprint for Apostolic Revival. I'm also tweaking our handbook we do for our seminars. And uh, also going to produce a few things this week while I'm home. I want to take advantage of my time while I've got it. I've got a very busy month once I cross next week. I thank God for being busy. Amen. But uh, this morning, uh, Prophet Eckhart was talking about new alignments, talking about God bringing new. Uh, networks and, and networks connecting with networks and this is exactly what the Lord's been speaking to me this past year it's not just uh, that's why we formed the relational network of the uh, international network of apostles and prophets uh, you can't join I'm sorry it's not a club it's not a uh, it's not a club it's not a, uh, a organization amen uh, it's uh, a relational network, and the only way you can become part of INAP, that's the, the term for international network of apostles and prophets, is go to www.spiritled.net, and you'll get information there on how you can become part of this network, but it's relational network, so it's all about sowing into people's lives. But I've been feeling this word all last year and every single seminar I taught, every single seminar I was in, uh, God was uh, speaking to me about networks, connecting with networks. And God's raising many networks across America that are apostolic. That God's getting ready to, to connect these networks, to intertwine them for the sake of the kingdom. And, and that's what I'm all about. I'm not about... I'm not even about trying to push international network apostles and prophets. It's just a vehicle. It's just a structure. I'm all about um, the kingdom. I want to see his kingdom come. To see Jesus made known. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and uh, those of you that come on, I'm, I'm getting ready to do this periscope. We're getting ready to kick it off. If you want to take time now to say hello and tell me where you're from. Amen. Um, sure, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot I was listening to music. I don't want that to be... Uh, there we go. Now you can hear me. I was just sitting here enjoying some good praise music and totally forgot that it was playing. 
Amen. I have a one-track mind on what my wife says. Amen. So God bless Hampton, Virginia. Let's just take a second and jump. Just just type in where you're from and say a quick hello. Amen. And we'll get this um, periscope kicked off. And I'll just be talking a little bit while you're uh, typing on the screen. Amen. Praise God. And please don't... Um, uh, London. Wow. Minnesota. Praise God. Welcome. God bless you. Uh, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Eureka, California. Wonderful. Amen. Can't see or hear anything. Michael Rodriguez. Oh, sorry, Michael. Maybe it's on your end. I think everyone can hear me just fine. Uh, Ukiah, Oregon, uh, Wisconsin. Amen. I'm open to bringing INAP to any place. If you would like to know about um, San Diego, California, Greenwood, Batesville, Mississippi, Acampo. Oh, my goodness. There's someone right here in Acampo. Amen. Uh, thank you for joining Bridget, Texas, from Granite City. Praise God. Amen. If you want to know about hosting an INAP event, a prophetic event, um, and can everyone hear me okay? Uh, Prophet Rodriguez said he couldn't hear. Am I coming through loud and clear? I think I am because someone just said that the music was too loud, so you wouldn't have heard it if, if um, so. Prophet Rodriguez, Bahamas. God bless you from Bahamas. Amen. Praise God. But if you want to know about hosting an INAP event, we do three types of events. Uh, Marino Valley, God bless you. Thank you for being on. We do uh, prophetic seminars, which are three-day uh, seminars that are 16 to 20 hours of intensive, exhaustive teaching on not only the apostolic, but also um, the FIFO ministry and its functions. And it's a time of awakening, aligning, and equipping, and activating the uh, believers into ministry. Amen. At the end of the meeting, we do an activation time of prayer, activating apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers into apostolic ministry. We issue certificates to those that desire certificates. And everyone who goes through our three-day seminar, if they need a license, we do give them a license with International Network of Apostles and Prophets. It is a non-profit 513C corporation. Amen. And we do issue that. Second thing we do is, is INAP apostolic prophetic conferences and these are conferences on the apostolic they're not sit down textbook workshop style it's more inspirational it's more ministry prophetic ministry flowing in the holy ghost and and we also do activations uh, apostolically in those conferences and the third thing we're adding this year is prophetic round tables and these are one night events and one breakfast morning event where one night will take some time to sit down and it's for those interested in prophetic ministry, you want to see if they feel a calling to, as a prophet to have their prophetic anointing sharpened. And then uh, we come back the next morning with the breakfast that we serve and we just have a round table. It's very informal. We sit down and we just talk, just connect, get to know each other and answer questions in a very impromptu setting. It's not a real formal setting. It's more of a connection. Amen. Praise God. And we do have one in, or in Georgia coming up in August. And I do need to add that to the Website, amen. Oh, Foley, Alabama. Yes, I was in Foley just recently. God bless you. Thank you for coming on. Amen. And um, we're excited about these events that are coming up. But again, if you would like to host an event in your city, and you don't even have to pastor a church to host an event. We do events in, in meeting rooms of hotels. Uh, we sometimes, uh, actually, it's, sometimes it's even better to be in a neutral location. Amen. Because it's much freer and, and sometimes... When people try to um, host an event, there's expectations that uh, we can't meet, and it's just easier. So uh, if you'd like to know more about our events coming up or you want to host an event, go to www.spiritled.net, and if anyone that's with INAP can put that on the screen, I'd appreciate it. And click on Upcoming Events, and there is a place you can click on to find information on how you can host an event in your city. Um, I want to take a few minutes and just talk about our vision for 2016, which is launching Apostolic Centers. And if you want to know about Apostolic Centers, um, I won't take a lot of time now to explain it. If you'll go to YouTube, type in my name, Arcovio, and in the search bar, click type in Apostolic Centers. I've got lots of teaching on Apostolic Centers there, what they are and what they consist of. But we are, next week, we are getting ready to go to Washington, D.C. We're going to the Capitol. We're going right there to the, the bed seat of political authority in America. And we are going to uh, uh, do what is called the Blueprint for Apostolic Revival. I'm going as an apostle to survey the land. 
We're going with prophetic warfare with an evangelist and a prophet. We're going to do some prophetic prayer over Washington, D.C. next week, on uh, Thursday and Friday, and do some connections and see about the viability of launching uh, an apostolic center in Washington, D.C. Excited about that. And then, of course, we're praying about the possibility in, in February to see an apostolic center launched in Granada, Mississippi. That's coming into play with one of the ministries that's come aligned with us. And we're praying about that. Um, we do need to raise some funds to do these things. Uh, we need about $3,000 to cover travel and, and, and all the expenses to get there and what it takes to, to do these functions. So if you feel a, a, a heart to be part of it, maybe you, maybe you can't start an apostolic center in your city. Maybe you're not able to start one. That's not your calling. But if you want to be part of this great vision, because we believe God's going to allow 30 apostolic centers to be raised across America this year. Uh, right now, we have right at 35 apostolic centers that have been launched in the past two years across the U.S. And, and the world. And we're looking for 30 more to be added this year as the Spirit of God is leading us. And we're excited about these apostolic centers coming into divine alignment with the fivefold ministry and what God's going to do through these apostolic centers. And if you would like to be part, because I believe even if you can't go help start and be on a team to start an apostolic center, even if you can't uh, start an apostolic center in your city, but I do believe that God can use you to support an apostolic center getting launched. And um, if you desire to do this, if you desire to help see an apostolic center get launched, um, go to www.spiritled.net and you can give. If you want to go and be part of a team, just uh, go to spiritled.net and uh, email us and let us know, amen, if you um, would like to be part of a team to do some prayer warfare, prophetic praying, or ministry on the streets. We believe in releasing believers and their giftings to make disciples. And when you go on one of our teams, we do block parties, we do prophetic prayer in the streets, we cast out devils, we lay hands, prophesy to people in the parks. It's exciting, it's powerful, but it's warfare. So you better be prayed up and be ready. Amen. And don't come if you don't got no gifts. Amen. If you don't got no gifts, stay home. Amen. I want to uh, get a, a shirt that says, Got Gifts. <laughs> Amen. Because you got to have some gifts when you get out into spiritual warfare and you start uh, doing warfare in the streets. Amen. And we're excited about this and, and uh, believing God and uh, looking forward to some great things to come. Amen. So again, um, I do want to say we're having to postpone our India trip that's supposed to be in, in three weeks because um, I just feel impressed the Lord to focus the finance that has come in, that is going to come in to these endeavors of Apostolic Centers in the next at least two months. Amen. I still have the trip going to South Africa to connect connect with Apostle Sawasawa. Excited about that. It's going to be an Apostolic Prophetic Conference in Johannesburg. And I believe God is going to do great things. Amen. And many great connections are going to be made for South Africa. Praise God. But we are postponing our India trip. So if any of you have decided you want to give towards India, if you could shift that giving towards launching these apostolic centers, I would deeply appreciate it. And we will uh, tend to India later in the year. I'm still doing Skype sessions with our connections in India. Once a month, we sit down and do several hours of teaching with Apostle Carlos, with uh, the apostle that's over there, Apostle Sassati, along with... Um, Pastor Jaya, and uh, sometimes we have as many as 30 ministers that are training and getting ready. They want to be aligned and activated in their ministry. So we're looking forward to making that trip to uh, India, but we want to do it right because it's going to take about $15,000 to be able to do this pastor's uh, conference and, and activation time, and I don't want to just go in, in shortcuts. So uh, we're excited about that, and we'll just keep doing these Skype sessions, these Skype teachings. When the time is right, we will go to India and uh, we'll reconnect with Apostle Sassity, one of our networked international apostolic centers in India. God bless you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, love, baby. Some of you got some real interesting handles. Amen. So let's just jump into prophecy here. I feel the Holy Ghost. God's given me a prophetic word I want to share. And I was reading in the Bible this morning and praying. And I, I read from Jeremiah 31 and 22. And this is a prophetic word I feel is going to be for this first month of 2016. Jeremiah 31 and 22 says, How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Of course, this is a... In, in, in essence, a word of correction and even judgment upon Israel because of their apostasy and their backsliding. 
And he said, How long wilt thou go about with thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. And while I was praying, the Lord just made known to me that uh, get ready because Hillary Clinton uh, is going to surge forward in these next few months. And uh, she most likely is going to become the uh, Democratic nomination of the prophet. They already spoke that at crossover. Uh, prophet Karn mentioned that. And I, I feel a witness on that. But uh, I feel there's a judgment that God is getting ready uh, to release upon um, uh, people. Last year, my heart was broken. Uh, and I've been really grieved this year, just especially over the issue of abortions. Abortions, ever since the Roe versus Wade um, uh, situation that took place um, back uh, in 1960, um, I might have the time wrong, it was either 65 or 68, but in the 60s when Roe versus Wade, uh, when they passed the, uh, the, the Supreme Court ruling, and that happened during a Shemaita year, at the end of a Shemaita year, at the beginning of a brand new seven year season, and every seven years, for the past seven sets of seven years, the past 49 years, there's been something happen on the scale prophetically in America and the world that has indicated uh, how God is dealing with nations. And uh, let me tell you something. God's judgment wheels may grind slow, but they grind finely. Know this one thing. God does not forget. David found that out. Oh, David went and he, in his lust, saw Bathsheba, lusted after her, wanted her, but knew she was married. So killed a man, put one of his best warriors on the front line, what a coward, to take his wife. And I'm sure after the first few months, David probably treaded carefully and just was lived in, in, in fear of someone going to find out. But I don't know if it was just one day, a year later, Maybe it was an early morning and the sun was shining and he was sitting on his terrace sipping some tea and the birds were singing. And everything seemed just fine. I don't know if David sat there and breathed a sigh of relief and just said, I got away with it. All of a sudden there's a knock on the door and the prophet Nathan walks in, sticks a finger in David's face and says, David, thou art the man. And the judgment of God visited David that day. Let me tell you something. When you do things that are depicable, wicked as a leader, you may think you get by with it. But you hear this man of God. There's a day coming when God will say the cup of wrath is full. He'll send his angels, his warrior angels, his angels of judgment. He'll say, deal with that. And since Roe versus Wade was passed, there's been over... 60 million children killed in America. If the blood of Abel, one man who was righteous, cried from the ground, what's the blood of 60 million children been doing these past 50 years? We just crossed the seventh set of Shemaita years. We've entered into that 50th year. Amen. And I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, judgment's coming. God's getting ready to judge things that people think he's overlooked. I'm speaking to Barack Hussein Obama. I'm speaking to Hillary Clinton. I'm speaking to Loretta Lynch. I'm speaking to Republicans and Democrats who you use your influence to fund and vote in Planned Parenthood. It's one of the most evil things that's ever come to our nation. And it's caused the blood of millions of children to rise up and cry to God. He said, their faces reform me, my throne, every day. Oh no. Maybe you ripped that child out of the womb, half born, so you could go scientist and, and, and you could uh, garner the stem cells for your research. That's what they, they, they uncovered that last year. Menus where scientists and doctors came in and would order what body parts they wanted. And to get certain stem cells from the brain, they had to have the child half-born and then kill the child. 
and then go and take the sales. I'm telling you, we're going to see the judgments of God this year. The judgments of God are falling upon you. You see, you seek evil. You don't seek good. And nothing good can come. I don't care how many millions of dollars you've made for your corporations and for your platforms of political power. You hear this man of God. Judgments are coming. You're killing the unborn. You're violating biblical principles. The violation of biblical principles last year against marriage, God did not wink at. God has seen it. And see, 2016 is the year of release, prophetic release. And all, all before you start shouting and saying hallelujah, that's prophetic release in every area. That's prophetic release of judgments, release of God's hand upon this nation. Yes, I thank God for great prophetic words that are going to come to pass of prosperity and blessing and breakthrough. And I'm claiming them this year. I'm believing God that all of those words laying dormant are going to come to fruition. But you hear this man of God. And I'm speaking directly. Barack Hussein Obama, Hillary Clinton, Loretta Lynch, every Republican and every Democrat. If your signature and your hands are on what funded that Planned Parenthood debacle last year. This year, God's judgments are coming to you. Amen. You cannot violate biblical marriage principles. You cannot kill the unborn. You cannot slaughter millions of unborn lives. You cannot violate the Constitution at will. You cannot seek to destroy this nation to, to get selfish gain and try to render America helpless. Mr. Obama, I don't care how much executive order you exercise to, to take away guns. It's all a smoke screen. You don't care about this nation. You just want to disarm this nation. You want to make this nation helpless and dependent upon good old Uncle Sam. You're destroying the minds of children and people. And I'm telling you, in 2016, God is going to step up. And God is going to bring some things into judgment. Revelation 21 and verse 8 says, But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'm not here just to be negative. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, I felt this. I felt God spoke to me too. He said, watch January the 20th. Watch January the 20th. He said on January the 20th, there's going to be a kickback. And I felt like there's going to be a kickback. All this stuff about gun control, all this stuff being forced on America, just forced against our will with, with the dictatorship of, 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 of um, the dictatorship of, of um, uh, executive control. Amen. All of this is fixing to come to, come to head. I'll tell you again, the, the spirit I felt when I, last year when I flew into uh, Memphis and I drove down to uh, Aberdeen to be with uh, uh, Apostle Bowen and I was ministering in a prophetic revival there and we went over to Tupelo to have lunch at the Red Lobster and we were driving back and, and I looked on the highway as we was driving. I looked over on the field and there was thousands of men out there dressed in army fatigues. Many of them had something white on their head or shoulders. I couldn't tell. But they were out there with, with AK-47s. They were out there with with. AR-15s, and they were doing military exercises. And I looked at that, and I said, oh, is, is there a part of the uh, armed forces here? He goes, no, Brother Kirby, that's the militia of Mississippi. They are armed. They, they boast hundreds of thousands that are willing to go into battle immediately. God's been speaking to me and saying that there's going to be a militia movement that's going to make a move this year. I don't know if that's going to happen on the 20th of January. He just said, get ready. On the 20th of January, there's going to be a kickback. But everything that's being forced upon America, it's going to have a response. Why? Because we're in the end times. Amen. And I believe this is the greatest day for revival. I believe this is the greatest day to step out. That's why we have this vision to go start apostolic centers. Centers where people become equipped, become trained, get released to go out into prophetic ministry to get released to go out and, and to do great works. Amen. And we're excited about what God is doing. But I wanted to share this word today. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our president. 
Let's really continue to cover this presidential race coming up this year in prayer. Amen. I said it on another prophetic word I gave a few days ago. I think it was the prophetic word, beware of Elemis. I said that, that, there's, that the race between uh, uh, Hillary and Donald Trump is going to get nasty, nasty, nasty. We haven't even seen even a tip of the, the, the I haven't even, even seen the tip of the iceberg. Yes, someone mentioned something about Mexican, and I, I gave a prophetic word uh, this weekend that, that we better do what we can in Mexico because it's, it's fixing to become very, very difficult to cross the border in, in Mexico. Something's fixing to happen. Amen. So whatever type of work you've got to do, I'm, I'm supposed to be going to do an absolute prophetic conference in April. I pray to God that this doesn't happen before then because I want to go and do this absolute prophetic conference with Apostle Israel. Amen. Down in Saca, Texas. Amen. But... It doesn't mean that you won't be able to travel. It's just going to become increasingly difficult. Something's fixing to happen. I, I was, I was, um, had just flown home from Cambodia, and I noticed on my passport that I only had uh, two pages left. Matter of fact, after I got stamped for being in Cambodia, I had one and a half pages left. And I thought, well, I better start thinking about the next six to eight months getting them the passport. And God spoke to me on the flight coming home from Singapore. It came like a bolt of lightning, and I sat up straight in my chair because it was such a powerful spoken word from God. I thought that, that someone had, had, had spoken to me because I was kind of halfway dozing in and out uh, from being jet lagged. And God said, no, as soon as you land, you go straight to travel documents downtown San Francisco, and you get new pages now. Because once you cross over the first of the year, it's going to become very impossible to add pages to your to your." your your passport, because they're, gonna, they're fixing to change everything. They're going to change how we travel. They're going to change how they allow us to go through security at airports. Everything is fixing to change. You hear this man of God, something's fixing to happen. I, I feel it in my bones. It, it was the, the 23rd of December. I didn't even know they was open. As soon as my flight landed and I went into the customs area to get my bags, I went in the bathroom and I called travel documents. I said, are you open? They said, yes, we are. When I got my bags, I got, I got in my car and went straight, straight to travel documents. And I submitted an application to get pages put on my um, passport. And when I said that, the man looked at me funny. And he went back in the back. And he came back again. Went back in the back. Came back. And he goes, um, I'm not sure if we can do this. I said, what's the problem? He said, let me talk to my supervisor. Went back in the back and then came back out and says, we'll push it through. I said, what do you mean? He says, don't you know that they're fixing to not allow any passports to have Pages added after the first of the year. I said, what? No, I did not know that. Well, I did know it prophetically. <laughs> so what am I saying? Whatever we do, it's time to do it. Quit sitting around making excuses why you can't step out for God. Prophet, apostle, walk in your gifting. Evangelist, quit being caught up in the politics of, of, of a modern church. Get out and make disciples. Get out and stir the body of Christ to make disciples. You don't need a fancy pulpit somewhere and a paycheck to do God's will. Get out and do God's will. He'll take care of you. Anointed a pastor, anointed teacher. It's time for you to quit trying to dominate God's people and quit trying to rule God's church. Get your hands off God's church. Start recognizing the giftings of people. Start recognizing their anointings and start releasing people into the harvest. It's time for us to do a work for God. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much for joining today. Again, this is Apostle John Arcovio from Acampo, California. I say Sacramento because if you try to find a campo, you can't find it. It's hidden. <laughs> we are in the middle of nowhere. Praise God. We're actually seven miles south of Sacramento, California. Excited about 2016. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Amen. And, and if you would like to be part of our apostolic centers that we're raising across America... Once again, go to www.spiritled.net and you can uh, support us there, amen, uh, by PayPal. If you want to know more about Apostolic Centers, go to YouTube, type in my last name, A-R-C-O-V-I-O. -O. That's A-R-C-O-V-I-O. -O, and then uh, type in Apostolic Centers. I got an entire playlist of Apostolic Centers teaching what our vision is. Amen. God bless you. We'd love to come alongside you, help awaken God's gift in your life, help align you with God's calling. We don't need evangelist pastoring. We don't need prophets dying in some pulpit somewhere trying to make a living. We don't need pastors that don't understand their calling and gifting. 
We don't need teachers that have been set aside and not recognized. We need the fivefold ministry to become empowered, recognized, affirmed, and released for the sake of end time harvests. I love you. I appreciate every single one of you. You mean so much. Especially those of you that we've been able to come in alignment with you. You're welcome. Thank you for, um, amen. Jennifer Osmer, God bless you, Jennifer, for coming on. Amen. A prophet of God. I've known her for 20 years. Amen. Thank you so much for, for coming and joining us. We love you. Thank you for supporting us in prayer, supporting us with your giving. Yes, it's all for nothing, sister. God bless you. Amen. Bring it or go home. I hear you. Amen. Come on now. Praise God. You're fixing to get me sort of again. I'm going to go another round. Hallelujah. But I've promised people I won't make these scopes very long. Amen. God bless you, apostles and prophets that are part of, of uh, INAP. I would love to come to Tennessee. Please just email us at our website and give us details, and we'll see what we can do. Amen. God bless Sister Ramana. God bless you. Ramia. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, those who have come on. Share this. Amen. Take a moment right now. I'll stay on just about for another minute. If you want to swipe your screen to the right or left, if you're on an iPhone, up or down on your uh, Android, and just hit share. Amen. Share uh, with people that you feel impressed to. I'm not just trying to build a base here of people. Amen. I sincerely just want to... Um, Amen. Oh, from Saw Rock. God bless you. Amen. With Apostle Andrews. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. I'm just trying to get the word out. Amen. That's my desire. Amen. I want to shout it on the mountaintops what God has spoke to me. Amen. So remember, 2016, the year of prophetic release. Those either are walking according to God's will, those either are walking according to God's plan, take that as a positive word that God is going to bring your promise to pass. Amen. Get into a habit of praying your prophetic promises. When God gives you a prophecy, record it. Write it down. Pray over it. Amen. You will see that prophetic word come to pass. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Didn't you say that last year? Um, what? Uh, I'm not sure what you were talking about last year. Yes, moving forward, sister. That was Apostle Eckhart's uh, word this morning. Moving forward. Amen. He really blessed me with that 5 o'clock a.m. word. He, yeah, he didn't know that that was a uh, 3 a.m. word for me. <laughs> Amen. Blessings from all. Uh, Pastor Luna, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Amen. Prophecy. I, yes, I may have said that prophecy. I repeat a lot of prophecies, amen, and a lot of things that, that, that are, are not time intensive, which means even though I speak them, they may not be locked within a, a certain year, amen, Pray, and sometimes prophecies span over into other seasons, amen. Hopefully that's what you was asking, amen. God bless you. Apostle John Arcovio, God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time.